This video is brought to you by Squarespace. There's a link in the description below to get 10% off your first purchase with them. And I'll talk more about all of that in a moment. Right, it's time for another tier list. Because I am a YouTuber. I was, I've written that I was going to say I'm a YouTuber and dab into the camera, but I felt incredibly self-conscious as I went to do it, which is unusual for me. Today I'm talking about rare land cycles, and I'm going to do a tier list of said rare land cycles. Let's clarify some terminology here, shall we? A rare land is a land that is rare. That one's kind of obvious. A cycle is a set of cards that are thematically or mechanically linked, and will often have one in each colour or colour pairing or guild or wedge or whatever. For example, this is the command cycle, where there is a command in each colour in Lawwin. This is a tier list so we have tiers they look like this and I'll place each cycle into a tier ranking them um, on their power level how good they are in commander cube and competitive formats and just how I feel about them how cool they are it's basically the science of opinion Except my opinion is fact. Now that is scientific fact. There's no real evidence for it, but it is scientific fact. Some lands might be missed out if I forgot about them, but I checked a wiki and I went through Scryfall checking bits and bobs as well, so I shouldn't have missed out too much. And it's all the dual lands. Dual lands, another bit of terminology here, a land that produced two colours of Magna. I almost burped as I said that. Let's try that again. Dual lands are lands that produce two types or three types of mana. I'm, I've just realized if I say three types, I've probably missed out a lot of lands. We're going to go with the two dual lands. We'll do tri lands in another video. Is there even that many tri lands? The great thing about missing out some of the lands on this is that I can do an ultimate definitive tier list later on down the line, like a, a Christmas re-release that'll be sold only in your local works and you can buy it to give to your nan at Christmas. The interesting thing about starting to compile some of the stuff for this and think about this was that there's not actually that many dual land cycles. I just assumed there was like insurmountable number of them and we only think about the best ones, but there's actually only like 20 or so. But before we jump right down into the tier list, I just want to shout out Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I recently, from last week, made my own website as a way of inflating my own ego, but also helping me by having a place to put a portfolio of my collaborators and collaborations and work, and to post shower thought blog posts about belly buttons. I wanted this to serve as a hub for my social links, so naturally I wanted all of my Warhammer and food and magic pictures from Instagram to feed right through if I could. I followed an easy to follow point by point guide on their help page and boom Instagram linked and integrated and feeding through to the website so now when you check it you can see all my pictures. Honestly if you're looking to set up a website for whatever reason whether we promote your own hobbying or as a portfolio of your own work I can't recommend the ease of use of Squarespace enough. They pride themselves on 24 7 365 day a year support on the platform and better yet if you follow the link in the description below of this video you can get 10% off your first purchase. The link is squarespace.com forward slash Kenobi at squarespace.com forward slash K-E-N-O-B-I and you get 10% off your first purchase. Now it's time for the tier list. Oh, I need to do more comfortable dabbing. Now it's time for a tier list. So as you can see, I've got some tiers. I've got S tier, A tier, B, C and D. D standing for dog shit. S are the iconic, the all time greats, the most powerful, the best of all the dual lands. Whilst dog shit is limited fodder crap that I would not put in my commander deck. We're going to go through them with whatever order they put them into this little box down here. So we're going to start with Sheltered Thicket, which is part of the Cycling Lands from Aminket. They are ETB tapped lands that have Cycle 2. So for 2 mana you can draw a card by discarding them. But most importantly, they have land types on them. In this case, Sheltered Thicket has Mountain and Forest, which means they're fetchable off of fetch lands, which we'll come to in a moment. So, I'm going to put Sheltered Thicket and this cycle in the A tier. They are borderline B tier, because a lot of them don't see any play at all across competitive formats, but I really like them for Commander, and also Sheltered Thicket in particular has seen play in Legacy in the lands deck as a fetchable red-green source that you can get on any step that's tapped. It's also a cyclable land to uh, redredge off loam, so it's some play in loam decks. Fetchable type utility and when you flood I mean the ETB is tapped which brings it down probably why it doesn't see that much play but I really like the cycle lands from Amonkhet which is weird because I don't look back on Amonkhet as a blog very favorably excavator is awesome these are awesome and some of the gods are good but besides that I think Amonkhet was rather forgettable in the long term next up we have the pain lands which I think see more competitive play than the sheltered thickets and similar the the cycling lands the bicycle lands but honestly I'm not a huge fan of the pain lands they feel to me they feel cheap 
Now, I've played with them in Standard, and I've played with them in some modern decks. There was a period when Storm, for example, played Painlands primarily because, well, it was a cheaper, more budget option, you didn't need to shuffle your deck, and sometimes it was just less painful than Fet shocking yourself, and you needed life to survive against aggro. I'm putting Painlands in at B. Now, I think they might see, well, they probably see less play than the Bicycle Lands these days, and they did, they were like a big part of, um, the Colorless Eldrazi modern and the Colorless Eldrazi standard as well, where these things provide you colored sources, but also the colorless manner for Thought Not Seers and Displaces and such. They have a heritage, right? But I'm putting them at B tier. They feel like cheap versions of Shocklands. And the other thing that bugs me about these things is that they have very specific names, Yavamaya Coast. So they can only ever get reprinted either in core sets or sets that take place on Dominaria, where Sheltered Thicket and the like can be reprinted anywhere. And if you haven't been on this channel before, I quite like Wizards of the Coast reprinting lands so that we can have a more affordable, uh, accessible game to play. Akuma Refuge represents several land cycles here. The Refuge cycle is an ETB tapped, no land type, dual land that gains you one life. It is dog shit tier. It is a limited piece of fodder, right? There's the Refuge and there's like one or two other cycles of the exact same thing. Um, the Refuge cycle being more named towards uh, Zendikar, the other ones being more generally named so they can show up on uh, Tarkir and stuff. I don't give a fuck. Fuck those lands. Then we have the Tango lands the battle lands the i think they had like four or five different names during their time in standard they have typed lands that come to play untapped if you can control two or more basic lands they're pretty good in terms of being lands that come into play untapped, they're also fetchable, which I think is wonderful. But I'm putting them at B tier, and the main reason for that is I hate calling them Tango Lands, and I hate the arguments around what they should be called. I still to this day don't really know what we refer to these as, as a community, colloquially, and that bugs me. So fuck you, Prairie Stream and the like. Rejuvenating Springs. A battle bond land. Now, oh, is this an S tier? I think this is an S tier. Look, it doesn't see any play outside of Commander. I get it because it's it cares about multiplayer. But the the battle bond lands and then the uh, Commander twenty twenty lands. I think it was the no, Commander Legends lands. The, the the whole cycle was spread across two uh, sets. These lands are some of the best dual lands you can get in Commander because they come to play untapped if you have uh, two or more opponents. And I like it because from a design perspective, they have a downside. If you kill an opponent or two in this case two, the lands come into play tapped. So there is a downside. They aren't just strictly as close as you can get to uh, dual lands. They aren't fetchable either. It's clear downsides, but the upside is huge. They're untapped lands designed for commander. These are the kind of lands that we should see in the fucking pre-cons, okay? I get that they sold Battle Bomb packs, and I get that they sold Commander Legends packs, but those sets would have sold on their own anyway because they were just really good. Put these in the fucking pre-cons, wizards. Come on. Boris Garrison and the selection of two color-making uh, bounce lands from Ravnica, uh, they make up a modern deck, okay? There's modern decks like Amulet that have used these to great effect, and I think they have their place in commander. Still, I'm putting them at C tier. The reason is, I think too many people play these and open themselves up to attempting people like me to wasteland this land. I know that sounds mean. I know someone plays a double land and bounce land back to the hand, and I'm thinking, I can wasteland that. But look, I've been programmed by magic to get as much value wherever I can. So if I can wasteland someone's two mana producing land, that is... Straight value. That is a one-way trip onto the circus of value. I have to do it. I've been conditioned to do it. It's the toxicity of the magic community coming out, right? It's not me. So I think people play them too much and they get upset when they get blown up or, or they get bounced. Or, better yet, if you flicker Whisper one of them, if I flicker it out it comes back and you're about to another land, that is a feel bad. I think people should play less of these in Commander, so I'm going to put it at C. It's close to a B. It probably should be in B. Oh, God, it is better than Prairie Stream. It is better than Prairie Stream. No, okay. Okay. I've been convinced by myself there to up it to B because it was modern playability, but you shouldn't be playing these in Commander. Next up, Boris Guildgate. Okay. It's, it, it's better than Refuge because it's got the Gate Super type, which allows it to play well with cards that care about Gates. And I enjoyed the Gates deck in Standard. Gates of Blaze, the big fucking Ram. It felt like you are playing Tron in Standard. And Dragon's Maze is a cool win con as well. I'm going to put it in C, but it's so close to being in D. It's so close. Boreal Shelf. Okay, this is an ETB tapped, no other ability, Snow Duel, the original Snow Duels from, uh, I say original, from Cold Snapper, the second ice, uh, the second part of Ice Age. I'm putting dog shit tier. If you're a snow deck and you need more jewels that make the colours you need in two or three colour in Commander, sure. But other than that, fuck these. Grove of the Burn Willows. This is the first of our uncompleted cycle. It is a land that taps with colourless, or it makes the two colours you want, red or green, and gives your opponent one life. This 
is a cycle that I would love to see completed. I don't know where the Burn Willows exist in the multiverse, so I don't know if they are set to a certain plane. That bugs me if they are. But Grover the Burn Willows, I want to see in all the other colours. The downside is minimal if you are not an aggro deck. If you're a deck like Tron, for example, that doesn't really give a shit about your opponent having 21, 22, or 23 life. That's when Burn Willows is traditionally played. Burn Willows also comboed with Punishing Fire, which is really cool into an action that. I'm glad it isn't in modern, but still she's playing Legacy in the Lands deck. Grove of the Bowman is a great card, and I would love to see the cycle finished. Horizon Canopy is from the same period. It's from Future Sight, where they did this cycle of lands. Each colour pairing got a weird land from the future, and we finally finished Horizon Canopy's cycle in the Modern Horizons set. Well, I say finished. We got the allied colours, we didn't get the enemy colours. Maybe because the blue red one would be too good. But Mo Horizon Canopy is up there as one of my favourite lands of all time, and I think it's ST. It is a pain land that can be cracked to draw you a card. It's only judged as well with Crucible of Worlds, Excavator, and Life from the Loam. And it gives yourself, in decks that struggle to have card advantage, like Green, White, Death, and Taxes, for example, it gives you a way to get some, some value out of your lands when you're flooding, when you've got access to an Aether Vial. I love it. Nimbus Maze is part of the Horizon Canopy Grove of the World Brown Willows future cycle, where they had a land from the future. Uh, obviously, Horizon Canopy got finished off as a cycle. Nimbus Maze still yet to be seen. It is a land that creates a colourless mana. It taps for white if you control an island. It taps for blue if you control planes. I really, really like it. Um, I would like to see them finish. I don't like it as much as Grove of the Bone Willows because I think the downside isn't as interesting. I'm going to put it in B tier, but I'm putting it way above the Painlands and the Boris Garrisons. This is a top B, borderline A. River of Tears was the blue-black one from that future land cycle, where it makes different mana depending on landfall. Blue, normally, or black if you've got landfall. I really like it. Uh, I don't like the tracking aspect of it, where I have had this in Commander before. I've been chatting away. I've forgotten if I made a land drop for the turn. Then we've got to ask the question, and all that comes in. So I'm putting this at the bottom of B tier. It's not a cycle that I don't mind if we never see, but I like the card. Maybe from a nostalgia perspective. And then we have the Fetchable Snow Duels. I'm going to put it above the Guild Gates, but below Prairie Stream. It's exciting. They may see a small amount of play if Snow becomes a big thing in Modern or Legacy. Well, probably not Legacy, but Modern if you want to have one Fetchable Snow land in your Field of the Dead deck. But it's unexciting. It's cool, but it's unexciting. We have our next inclusion in the S tier. We have probably the top of the S tier, barring one other land cycle. We have a fetch land, Scolding Town. The fetch lands allow you to crack them and go look for a land with a land type. In this case, the Sheltered Thicket, for example, or Prairie Stream, for example, those cycles. Scalding Tarns play very, very well in Modern and Legacy with lands that we haven't come to on the tier list yet. They are phenomenal. Their synergies and their power level is incredibly high. They play well with Brainstorm and Jace the Mind Sculptor. They play well with Life and Alone. They play well with Excavator and Crucible. They play well with Landfall triggers like Avenger of Zendikar, Tireless Tracker, and Baloth. They are just phenomenal. Lotus Cobra. How can I forget Lotus Cobra? They are some of the best lands ever printed, and that's probably why Wizards are adverse to bringing them back too much, because they're so powerful. They're, they're too good for stats. Standard. Ultimately, Wizards of the Coast should be reprinting them to make the older formats more accessible, but we know they don't give a fuck about doing that, so it's never going to happen. So I've, I've banged that drum a lot, and I'm still banging it. I'm just sick, and I'm fucking tired. Sea Chrome Coast. The Fastlands. I love them. However... I'm going to put them in B tier. Seachrome Coast was a fast land cycle that started in the Siege of uh, Mirrodin, the uh, Mirrodin Besieged block. Uh, the Scars of Mirrodin block, should I say. And Seachrome Coast is named after the Seachrome Coasts, the Seachrome being these metal seas of chrome, which is kind of in the name, that are from Mirrodin as a plane. So they're kind of locked to Mirrodin as a plane. We had the second part of the cycle, the, the enemy coloured ones, the alternate coloured ones, in uh, Kaladesh. And they were a bit more loosely named, like Spire Bluff Canals, for example, so they could show up in other formats and other sets. Um, but the reason I'm knocking them down from A to B is because A, uh, they're, they're expensive and hard to reprint, and B, they're expensive and hard to reprint. I said A and B, but that's really the only reason I've got for them. I just wish they hadn't named them in some way that's so specific to the plane. And on that point, I do like lands that are named to the plane, because I think it helps with world building a lot, but we are living in a world where the game is prohibitively expensive for other people to play because lands get expensive, so not seeing the correct reprints in supplemental sets like commander decks or, or, or ultimate sets and stuff and master sets is a shame. So I'm going to knock people down for that. And by people, I mean lands. Mystic Gate, the filter land set from Shadow Moor. Um, they're fine. I'm going to put them below the fast lands or above the rest of the stuff on this this tier here. Playable, sees fringe play from time to time, helps to cast cryptic in modern for a little while in blue white. Perfectly reasonable, um, just not that exciting. 
The Fortified Village land cycle, the land cycle of the Reveal lands from Shadows of Innistrad. I'm putting them below Prairie Stream here in the C tier. I'm not a big fan of these lands in Commander at all. I don't like lands that make your future turns worse. On the upside with the Garrison and the other like ETB bounce a land back to your hand, they help you make a land up later. So the bounce lands are great and limited for making you hit your land drops later. What Fortified Village does, it comes into play tapped unless you reveal land from your hand. So if you've got a follow-up land on the following turn, then it's good now. If you don't have a follow-up land, it's even worse now. Making low land count hands, even worse to keep. So I'm not a big fan of it. I've stupidly put Vase of Ocean Thicket in here because I saved two copies of Seacrone Coast. Just gonna leave that down there. It's the same cycle as Seacrone. We come to Steam Vents, another S tier. Up it goes into S tier. This is the modern mana base. It is fetch lands and shop lands, and on rare occasion, checks and pain and stuff, right? These things are phenomenal. They're doing an impression of the OG duels that we're getting to soon, uh, but they cost you two life to bring into play. What is there to say? They have land types, they enable the sort of things. They're great in cube, they're great in commander. Your commander deck should start with, if you own them, fetch land, jewel land, shock land. That should be your beginning of your um, uh, mana base. I really can't labour enough how good these are, except they're not as good as Fetchlands. The Temples of Silence and so on, the Scrylands, I like them, but I like them less than the Fastlands, but more than the, the Filterlands. The Scry is good. I remember when they were revealed as rare, and people were like losing their minds that they felt like they are on common cycle, and they can't believe that they've been put at rare. And whilst I agree with them that rare lands should be shifted down in rarity so we can have the game become more accessible, the, the, the staples, the rare, powerful bombs can be expensive, but the mana bases, the chessboard upon which we play the game, should be cheaper. But... It was funny, because once we started playing with them, we are like, shit, the scry is really quite good. There was also talk of every two to three scries counted as another card, because the card quality of your draws and the lack of flooding or, or lack of mana screw was really evened out by them. So I really like temples, but not quite as much as the fast land. I also like that, although they're temples to gods on Theros, they're named in such a way with Temple of Silence, Temple of Epiphany, Temple of Malady, that they could actually appear on most planes where gods or deities or worship would happen. That is good forward-thinking design. Scry Shroud Forest is just a shit filter land that can make a colourless mana on its own, but so can the other ones, so I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. They're just a bit shit. Sky Shroud Forest is just a shit pain land that comes to play tapped. We're going to put you down uh, in front of the gates and in front of the stone lands, but behind the, check, uh, the reveal lands. Probably the most inconsistent of the cycles here, because some of them are godlike. For example, uh, Celestial Colonnade has been, the blue white one has been incredible in constructive formats as a win condition for the blue white control decks and creeping tarpet is a phenomenal card in cube and we've seen jund make use of um uh, the red green uh raging ravine and of the hissing quagmire meanwhile lava claw is was one of the laughable ones of the cycle that includes the box toppers and ultimate masters so this cycle of creature lands is really inconsistently good i'm gonna put them at the Top of B, below the temples and below Seacrum Coast. Because I see play a little bit, but not every... I see a bit more play than these, right? This is played in Ad Nauseam in Modern. Okay, above the Scroll Lands, below the Fast Lands. We've got the OG Duel Land. I want to leave it to the last, but here it is. Bang. Do you know what? Do you know what? Out of or above. We're going to have God Tier. God Tier. And in God Tier, we're going to have Duels and Fetches. OG duels are hands down the best lands we've ever seen. They're on the reserve list, so they're never reprinting them again. And part of the collectability of having so few of them in the wild, plus their playability in internal formats, and being strictly the best land option in Commander, has made them incredibly, incredibly expensive. Hundreds of dollars for jewels at this point. Uh, if you look at Alpha and Beta ones, thousands of dollars for jewels. Now, it's, it's wild that they're so expensive and it pisses me off, but they are godlike. If you are playing in a phantom environment like online, or if you're playing cube, these are your go-to best bits of fixing, and they don't shock you again when you bounce them back to hammer days and stuff. They're so, so good. I can't labour enough. So, I'm going to make a new tier for duels and for fetches. Because whilst fetches aren't as good at fixing as duels, I do think an entire format where duel lands aren't available, but, but, but just fetches are in those shocks, you can still have quite a good mana base with fetch lands. And fetch lands have all, have all the extra utility and uh, versatility to them as well. Where OG duels, they just fix your mana up perfectly. What's having the downside of being blown up by Wasteland and Legacy? It's a really nice back and forth of power level and design restriction. Another copy of Underground Sea there, where I couldn't decide which, which borders to use, but I used the iconic one. We then have check lands that check on land types, uh, so they play well with shock lands and dual lands that have types. We're going to put check lands in the top... Oh, 
middle of uh, top of A, top of A. I think they're better than the Cycle Lands, but I'm not that excited by them. I play them most of my Commander decks. I guess is the point that I'm trying to make. Our Pathway Lands. I'm gonna put them at the top of B. We've got both halves over here. At the top of B, below Fast Lands, but above. Creature man. I think the whole pathway mono double face thing is really cool. It's an interesting idea to help with variants, especially when we put lands on the back of MDFCs as well. So I really, really like them. Um, they aren't fetchable. They don't fix you for two colors later in the game. You have to commit to what you want earlier. So they have a cool design restriction that I think plays into them being a good piece of design. I really, really like them. Do you know what? Oh, do I put them above the fast lands? I will. I will. They are reprintable elsewhere. We can have pathways in all sorts of places. We've already seen this. They've already proved this by having them in both Zendikar Rising and Kaldeheim. And it's not Kaldeheim. I get into the habit of saying Kaldheim. 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 I'm sorry. Okay. I'm an idiot and I can't help it. But then being in Zendikar Rising and Kaldheim shows that they can be reprinted in multiple sets because the names aren't specific. So that makes them better than the Fastlands. I kind of have a soft spot for Row of the Bermelos, and I love the Cycle Lands. I can't put them above that. So yeah, I'm going to put them at the, the bottom of A. And there we have it. God tier, S tier, A tier, B tier, C tier, and dog shit tier. That is my tier list of dual lands, of rare... I think rare, I think even why I said rare. Some of these are common and uncommon. I'm an idiot. Do you think I was too kind to the pathways? Do you think I was too mean to the fast land? Let me know in the comment section below and tell me which land cycle you have a soft spot for. Which land cycle you're nostalgic for. Which land cycle gives you a throbbing erection. I've been Vince, also as Pleasant Canadian on the internet. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found it at least entertaining and a little bit informative. I hope it made you think, hmm, why the fuck am I even playing that in my commander deck, for instance? And don't forget, if you are looking to set up a website, there's a link in the description below to 10% off your first purchase from Squarespace. And it helps to support the channel to allow me to keep doing what I'm doing and the all the exciting content that I have planned for the rest of the year. In the meantime, be good to one another. Hit that like button. Don't forget to smash the bell. Subscribe. Be good. And I'll see you all soon. Ta-ta for now.